All right. Well, um, I think we're looking in really great shape. Um, I think we should kick off. And um, once again, my name's Simone. I work for the Advertising Council. Um, and uh, let's begin by really uh, the acknowledgement of country. Award would like to begin by acknowledging and paying our respects to the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation who are the traditional custodians of the land from which we broadcast today. Award would also like to acknowledge their culture of storytelling through art, dance and music, and we pay respect to the elders past, present and future on other lands throughout all communities who might be participating today. Fantastic. So welcome again. My name's Simone um, and I work for the Advertising Council and look after Award School nationally. Um, Award School is powered by the Advertising Council and an exceptional lineup of industry leaders who serve as school heads, speakers, tutors, mentors, judges and ambassadors. Um, so really before I kick off 2024, I really want to just have a big shout out to them and thank the thank the new cohort of 2024 supporters um, this year too. Um, so to also move on to um, uh, a big shout out to Meta, who are our major sponsor for the seventh year running. Um, so now let's dive straight in and uh, watch our highlights video. So here we go. So that was a great test, taster um, for award school. And it's now my pleasure to hand over to our national school head, Scott Diedrich, who's the creative director of The Monkeys, part of Essentia Song. Thank you very much, Simone. Um, so hello, welcome to uh, the award school uh, 2024 info night. Um, I am Scott Diedrich. I'm the joint head of award school. Yeah, my uh, my co-head, um, Shan Edmondson, um, couldn't be here tonight, so she sends her apologies. Um, she's the group creative director at MNC Saatchi. Um, and in the true um, uh, glamorous style of advertising, she's on a night shoot in the wind and rain somewhere in Sydney right now. So, um, yeah, that's a little bit of insight into <laughs> where the job can lead, but it is very exciting. Um, firstly, if you're here um, uh, and you, you're obviously ready on a path to get one step closer to a career in creativity, um, so welcome to the club. Uh, we're really thrilled um, and there'll be time at the end um, to ask any questions that you might have missed um, uh, along the way. It's going to be a pretty rapid fire hour of information. Um, and basically in this in this session, we're going to introduce you to a few people who run the course. Uh, we'll cover what award school is, um, what you'll get out of it, what's new in 2024, how to apply and then what happens when you get in. Um, I think, you know, there were some people <laughs> in the chat before saying, I'm very nervous and all that. Don't be nervous. It's cool. Like, we've got you. Um, there's lots of stuff that we're going to show you tonight um, that will show you that it's not as scary as you think. Um, so, but we just thought we'd kick off by um, getting some of you to tell us a bit about yourself as a bit of an icebreaker. Um, and so in the chat here, if you could just uh, answer this question, which is, how did you first discover that you were a creative person? Um, so, yeah, really interested to, to see how, you know, because people can be creative in lots of different ways. You might be a writer, you might be a painter, an artist or something, but there's creative accountants, there's creative people in all sorts of, um, in all sorts of realms. Um, so, yeah, what have we got here? Used to paint and draw as a kid a lot. Yeah, that's good. Lego, Lego, that's a good one. Um, art class in high school. Um, wow, they're coming in so thick and fast. I, I can I can hardly keep up with them. Writing stories at school, the bully the bullies made it clear. I want to dig more into that, or I'm not sure if I do. Um, drawing and scrapbooking, brain overdrive. Um, fell into a book and never came out. I like that one. 
Um, the Robocop VHS cover, I couldn't stop redrawing the typeface. Well, I have a back, I come from a graphic design background, so I feel that one. Um, grabbed a video camera um, and filmed an action movie, I think is what that was going to be. Um, making art with your grandmother, that's awesome. Being a smart ass, uh, another one which I can identify with quite heavily. Um, drawing comics as a kid. Dressing my sister up when I was younger. That's, yeah, this is all good stuff. And like, believe it or not, like all of these skills and all these sort of things. And you, once you actually get into creative thinking, drawing on some of these um, experiences uh, definitely um, can, um, you know, lead, lead to you creating more interesting things because it comes from things that you've experienced. Um, making skateboard films, another passion of mine. So it's, it's good to see someone um, doing that. It's a very creative area. Writer, blogger, drew as a kid. Wow, wow. I can't keep up with how many there are. Dancing to Weird Al in front of the class. Amazing, amazing. Uh, I was working as an engineer and I all I could think about was becoming a comedian. Awesome. Um, fine art was more fun than English. Feel that one too. <laughs> Wild imagination. Yeah, so it looks like, look, we've got a lot of creative people here, which is great. Um, and um, yeah, I think, you know, you'll all see as we go through this that, you know, a lot of these things that have led you to this point um, will serve you pretty well as you, as you start to go through the course. Uh, oh, so, you know, it's great to see so many of you. Um, and great news is that award school is the best place to um, really nurture your creative thinking. So if you're in an agency already, um, and looking to step into the creative department or you've just loved art or writing and always felt that you wanted to improve creative thinking skills, this course is for you. You might not have a background in any of those things. That's also completely cool. Um, there's something really special about award school because it's run by creative people. Um, and so everyone who tutors, you'll meet them in a minute um, and lectures um, and all your state heads, they're people who work in the industry and we all do it because we're passionate about fostering creativity in, and in students um, and really just, you know, seeing our industry um, grow and bringing great creative minds into the industry, which makes it a better industry and also makes it more fun. You end up working with smart people, which is always cool. Um, so with that, um, you know, depending on which state you're in, um, you'll have your own award school heads. Um, these guys are all legends in their fields. Many have tutored, many have been working with award school for years, longer than me. Um, so very experienced people. Um, and what we're going to do is just go around um, all the different tutors now, if you guys can turn your cameras on. Um, and we're going to introduce ourselves um, as, as we go down this list. And each of you, we're going to give a tip um, to all of you for your awards um, school applications. So as a representative for the National and New South Wales School Heads tonight, my tip for award applications would be to keep it simple um, and we'll take you through all the questions and what you need to go through later but don't try and put too much on the page or be too clever um, it's actually harder to use less words but you know your communication will be much clearer um, so yeah the, that the, the cleverness comes from the simplicity so I just keep it simple that would be my main tip um, and so I might just pass it over to team Victoria um, to give us your tips and introduce yourselves Hey everyone, I'm Hui. I'm a senior art director at Clemenger BBDO here down in Melbourne. And um, my tip is, um, there's this term I love, which is called constructive discomfort. And that comes from like the learning of new things is very uncomfortable, but necessary. And that's a feeling that you'll get with every new brief, like I still get it at times. And that's because you don't know the answer straight off the bat. Um, I didn't really click with award school until about like six weeks in, which is like arguably a long time, but I would say that's okay. You're not gonna know everything right off the bat, um, but that's also the exciting part. So feel nervous, risk looking silly, and just embrace this feeling of constructive discomfort. Great advice. Love that way. Um, I don't think it clicked for me until after award school, to be honest. Um, so I spent a bit of time in that constructive discomfort phase. Um, but my my top tip, my name's Ryan. I'm a creative director at Ogilvy in Melbourne. Um, my top tip would be to go back and watch um, our masterclass from October. We kind of go in and, and unpack really what it means to 
crack a creative brief and sort of elaborate a bit more on some some techniques and tips um, that can help you do that. So that's that's available on the award school website. Um, and I'll pass to Richard, I think, over in uh, WA. Thank you. Um, yeah, I am. I'm in the southwest of WA on Wajak Noongar, Wajak, uh, actually in my house, in my study. This is my house. So welcome to my house, everybody. Um, my tip, it's broad, but um, once you've, I think you've got four questions to answer. Once you've done each of them, just look at it and the the best ideas move they will move you like you will give a shit about them you will think that moves me in some way there will be some emotional response from it um if you have a cold response then probably the judges will too that's ultimately what people are looking for like humanity so um i think that's a good way to judge your own work does it move you cool um Jessamy? Yeah. Hi. Um, so um, I'm Jesme Ross. I am a senior copywriter at VML um, in Brisbane. I have been award school head for a couple of years. I did award school 10 years ago. So it's feeling very like, I think a couple of other school heads too. It's feeling very poignant for me because I remember when I saw the comment about feeling nervous, I feel nervous, excited, nervous, but um, it, it's, it's such a pleasure to be involved in, in, in any capacity. Um, whether you're a student or you're at, at the other end of it. So um, I guess my tip would be uh, sort of building on um, what was just said about like showing us your your spark um, and, and like producing something that moves, that creates a response. So the opposite of that is doing something that's very normal and linear and just clear, but there's there's nothing interesting about it you're better off going somewhere wild and big and connecting back um, than going somewhere linear and straight with like a tiny twist in it and, and hoping that'll work. Um, yeah, you want to move people with that answer. Some response is, is, better than, um, is better than no response. And if you do well, you'll be on brief as well. And then it's a tick. Nice. Corey. Awesome. Hey everyone, I'm Corey Swapper, ACD at KW, KWPX in Adelaide. Um, just picking up on what uh, Jesmy was saying, uh, I was just going to say, don't be boring. There's going to be a lot of applications. So what are you going to do to make yours stand out? That's be interesting, be moving, like Richard said, but keep it simple, like Scott said. There's, you know... It should move you. It should make you feel uncomfortable, but that's that's what's going to make it interesting. That's what's going to make it stand out. Don't be boring. Scott and Corey. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Kaya Nicholas, Associate Creative Director and Innovation Lead at BNF uh, Sydney. And uh, following on, I guess, from what everyone said, I would say to uh, be be your maximum self, your most authentic self when applying, you know, um, you haven't done the course yet. So we don't expect you to know exactly how to do this or how to answer briefs perfectly. What we're looking for is what makes you, you, what's creatively different about you and what's the truest thing you can say for you when you're looking at those questions, you know, why do you really want to apply? Why does this matter to you? Think, yeah, I think always come back to what's really true for you. Yeah, I think that's great advice. It's not what you think the the, the people judging this work's going to want to hear. It's yeah, if it comes from the heart, it's going to be real and true. So I think yeah, some great advice there um, for what you can do um, to maximise your applications. Um, so thank you to all the um, different uh, school heads around the country. Um, so that's all cool. But uh, what is award school? We should probably start with that. Hey. Um, Award School, it's a 12-week part-time evening course about ideas. Uh, it's our 42nd birthday. We've been running since 1983, and it's always been run by creative people for creative people, and specifically to train people who want to become creatives in the marketing communications industry. And it's taught by people who work in the industry and all these kind people you've just met volunteer their time. So we're all very passionate about it, um, and we're here to, um, to help all of you guys because we love it.
Um, award is part of the Advertising Council of Australia, uh, the peak non-profit body that represents agencies in marketing and communications industry to government industry, media and the public. Um, and look, we all know how powerful creativity is and at award, we believe that creativity, it's a force that can progress commerce, it can progress culture and help, you know, help society um, done the right way. So this industry is about ideas um, and it's an industry where creatives are measured on the quality of their ideas. And that's what this course is there to help you learn how to do. Um, so why should you do the course? Um, do the course if you want to learn the difference between good ideas and bad ideas. Um, do the course if you want to learn how to craft ideas and make an impact. Um, so ideas are everywhere. You know, there's ideas for social posts that you see on social media. It could be for lyrics. It could be for a new kind of ice cream. Everyone's got ideas, um, but there's lots of ideas in the world um, that never seen get seen or noticed. So what we teach is how to craft your ideas so other people can understand them um, and they want to interact with them and expand on them and find out more about those ideas. Um, and so we'll help you understand your ideas better so you can craft your ideas and make an impact. Um, and this course can open the door to some amazing careers outside of the advertising industry. You know, it, dare we say it, you know, this course can help with life. You know, <laughs> having amazing ideas, you know, can lead you to some amazing careers in and outside of the advertising industry because uh, ideas aren't just limited to, to the advertising industry. You can see like all the different things, all the different vocations there that that could be helped by by creative thinking. Um, and I think gone are the days of, you know, like I know my parents, they had the same job for their whole career and then they retired. Um, I think a lot of people have multiple careers over their lifetime now. Um, and having creativity in your skill set certainly helps open up doors to all sorts of different industries. Um, and when we look, you know, even just 10 years into the future with everything that's happening at the moment, it's, you know, it's going to be the people with great creative skills and imagination who'll still be in hot demand, I'm sure. Um, turns out robots and AI aren't that great at creative thinking as much as chat GPT and, and all those things are quite clever. Um, really to, you know, create a problem solve and create a true human connection takes a great creative thinker. Um, and this course can help you, you know, no matter what job stream, you know, you think you're going to end up going into. Um, and I think, you know, we believe creativity can solve everything. It's not just about jobs. It can change the way your brain works. Um, it can make you less judgmental. You know, it can make you see opportunities and, and adapt to change quicker. It might even help you win an argument at the pub, you know, um, especially once you, once you learn some presentation skills and how to think on your feet quickly. Um, so what does 2024 look like for award school? Um, if you come to the info night before, um, you might have, um, or know someone who's done award school um, before, we have made a few changes. Um, it's still a 12 week course. Um, you'll answer 10 different briefs to cover off different types of media. Um, and in the end, at the end of those um, 12 weeks, you'll have a portfolio, which you'll submit and we'll go further into that later. Um, for convenience, all the lectures are delivered as a video, uh, but we'll still get together for five in-person lectures, except for the online program, of course, um, throughout the course. And then we've got some amazing speakers this year. I'm super excited to see these people speak. Um, and as part of the overall learning experience of award school, you know, it's quite important to attend those and learn from those people, especially as those briefs come through and they're talking about those different subjects, you know, for the, and, for the in-person lectures, um, I implore you to turn up to those um, if you can, because it's a great way to meet other people doing the course outside of your immediate group at the agency that you're at. Um, as you get further along, you might want to try and partner up with somebody and that person just might not be within your group. It might be somebody else that you meet at one of these, these functions. And it's good to just talk to other people about their experiences you'll get there and you'll realize everybody's probably going through the, through the same, you know, struggles and, and, and trials with it all. Um, but it's great to support each other and, and have a chat to each other about how they're approaching things and, and, you know, how they're thinking about stuff. Um, and it'll probably give you a little insight into, you know, if you talk to other people about how they're approaching stuff, if there's a common theme running, well, maybe you can do something better than that and help stand out from the crowd for your final work. Um, so the the shoots, um, uh, they're probably the most formative thing you'll do. Um, is this is where you'll present your ideas, 
And look, we know that can be scary for people, but look, please be rest assured that, you know, if you're presenting, you know, you've done all this hard work and you've gone to present it, um, these are comfortable, nurturing environments. Your tutors understand very well how tough it can be. They've been through the best and the worst of doing presentations. Um, and also, you know, a lot of them have tutored before, so they're, they're very um, adept at, at, at helping you through that process. Um, and everybody everybody is should be re you know, really supportive in those um, in those environments um, and help you learn. Um, and bear in mind too that every tutorial you'll come with your ideas, but that won't be the be all and the end all that night. You'll still have more time up until the end of week 12 um, to craft your ideas um, to put into your portfolio. So um, you can tear, you, if, if something you did that night or presented that night, just you felt didn't work, you can tear it up and start again if you need to. Um, so yeah, there's um, there's no, no pressure at those, but yeah, please, you know, just make sure that you know that it's not it's not going to be too full on or anything like that. It's uh, it's it's not as confronting as it might seem. Um, some of the course is digital, so um, basically there's all these resources. So online resources that provide everything um, for you know going and finding briefs if you've lost them. Um, looking at responses to briefs from past years of award score as well. Um, so you can see how people have responded to similar kinds of briefs. It won't be the same briefs, but you might you know that might prompt some thinking, or you see how someone's done something cleverly. Um, and this year for the first time, there's a content hub as well. And then which, which houses sort of all, all those videos and all that content, but then this year as well, there'll be uh, discord channels as well for chatting. Uh, we'll talk about a bit more about that in a minute. Um, so what you'll need to do. So once you're in the course, you complete 10 briefs over 10 weeks. Um, you'll choose your best idea for each. And then you'll submit these online as you create a folio for judging. And then you'll see the best work at your individual graduation. So there'll be work chosen for the wall that's the best in each briefs. Um, and so what's new and newish? Um, so we're always making sure the course we're creating is going to set people up for the industry in the right way. Um, that comes down to the briefs, the subjects for briefs and things like that. Um, we're obviously just trying to make it make sense in the real world. Um, and so there's a few things that we change as we go. Um, week zero, um, this was introduced a, a few years back, but it's worth talking about. It's basically a lecture where we cover all the fundamentals of advertising. Um, so you might have already heard a few words thrown around that you know I might have said or someone else might have said um, that you don't understand don't worry about that. This is where we'll sort of maybe even go through a bit of a glossary of what some of those words mean. Um, so when you hit week one, you'll have a little bit of an insight into you know what you what you're going to be what what you need to know and what you can understand and all these things. They're just jargon, right? They're just words that once you've learned what they mean, you understand what they mean and you move on. Um, it's not a big deal. It's just something you might not be familiar with. So this is a time to familiarize yourself with that. And just things like we'll we'll talk about what is a brief, what's a big idea, yeah, what is craft, what is execution, all those sorts of things. So if they're things that you you don't feel like you have a, a handle on, don't worry about it. We're going to talk you through that in week zero, so that'll be very useful. Um, and then ambassador support, you'll be able to reach out to ambassadors, and we can share more about that in week zero as well. The commercial uh, creativity brief. Um, so this is really, it, it's been a part of award school for a few years now, but um, it's brief 10, it's the last brief. Um, and, you know, I've judged um, award school books um, for a number of years and it sometimes brings down you know, some of the most interesting work in because it's basically a chance that once you've been through weeks one to nine, you've learned a whole bunch of stuff or week 10, there's this commercial creativity brief. It, it really benefits creatives as they move through their career because uh, you know, a large number of client briefs these days require you know um product development and commercial creativity to solve business problems so that's why you know this commercial creativity brief is a very practical part of the award school program you know you might just have a side hustle it, it'll <laughs> it'll help you that brief will help you in your thinking of how to bring something to life how to bring an idea to life so um that's a good one um and then as we said before the discord chat so it'll be a new channel to help people connect with award schoolers easily um We'll talk about more about that in week one, but that'll be a space where you can all chat 
uh, with each other and talk about stuff. Um, we'll, we'll sort of work out how we're going to break that up. You know, you can bitch about us. You can, whatever. It'll be a safe space that we won't necessarily be in. There might be some channels that we're in there to answer some questions, but we're, we're going to work that out. Um, and so you're probably wondering how to apply. Um, so I'll take you through that. Um, so there'll be a brief, uh, and tonight that's uh, for all of you um, who are here, which is good because you're two days ahead of everybody else uh, for turning up. So well done. Um, everyone else won't get it until Thursday. Um, that brief's going to be due on the 22nd of February uh, by 5 p.m. And to keep it fair, there's no extensions. Um, and submissions will take place via our online portal, which is which is easy to use. And you can only apply for one program, of course. Um, so hopefully you're all really excited and juiced by now. Um, we're going to go through some more stuff, which will you know sort of tell you a bit more about the application process. Um, just so you know, we accept, accept around 200 students nationally, um, usually around 90 to 100 in New South Wales, 60 in Victoria, 10 in WA, 15 in Queensland, 10 in South Australia, and 15 online. Um, to be accepting the course, each person just needs to submit that folio. Um, and based on that, um, there's a there's a brief, yeah, the brief that we'll share with you tonight that you have to answer. Um, and they're chosen purely on the merit of the ideas. Um, and basically there's a, a panel of creatives who work in the industry, um, top creatives who will go through that work and, and help us pick the best work. Um, there's no age restrictions or particular tertiary requirements to be eligible for award school and no experiences required. So um, anyone can apply. Um, it's all about creative thinking. Um, and applying is easy. So we'll basically, you'll answer four questions. You get one page per question. Um, you'll submit your answers to our online portal and you'll have two weeks to answer those four questions, as I said. So question three, the brief changes each year, but usually consists of writing an ad and submitting it in a very basic form, which we'll take you through. Um, and we'll just go through some examples of the questions and how people have responded in the past, just to give you a bit of a taster of, of, of how you can approach this. Um, so question one, why do you want to do the course? Um, if you answer in writing, please keep it to less than 50 words. Um, and answering in writing is completely fine. Um, if you don't feel like you're, you're an artist, um, we're looking for writers as well in the end. Um, Try to avoid using words like passion or dream. I think um, we all know that you're obviously, if you got to this point, it's either your dream or you're passionate or both. Um, just talk about why you um, why you want to do the course. Um, we're really interested to just find out what's inspired you. And I think we've already got you know, a great list of uh, what, what's brought people here so far. So it might be expanding on some of those themes for some of you. Um, here's some examples of stuff that's been submitted before. Very simply, I hate ads. What a great response, you know, a chance to come in, grow your creative thinking and make it better. Um, and then there's some other examples there that you can see that people have put in, of, of, you know, in their own way, in their own style of creativity um, to basically respond to that. Um, so yeah, what it, whatever has brought you to it, um, to, to this point um, and, and why you would like to, um, what kind of creative person you are. Think of it like, it's like an ad for yourself. Um, question two um, is find a, a bad print ad, poster or billboard, something you can provide a picture of. An ad so bad that you know you could have done it better. And believe me, there's plenty out there. And I'm sure you guys have all seen them. <laughs> um, using pen and paper only, no computer layouts, create a better ad for the same product, um, which I'll take you through how that might look in a sec. Uh, importantly, the ad you create must communicate the same message as the original. Um, so looking at that, here's a couple of examples. Um, so a fairly uninspiring uh, SunSmart ad for the Cancer Institute, say, stay sun smart at school with a picture of kids with hats and long sleeve shirts on. Um, but a better way to do that, a more interesting, engaging way, um, more provocative way to do it, you know, uh, right next to it, A+. plus. Zach has made a lot of progress this summer. He's obviously made a lot of progress on his tan, um, aging him severely um, um, and just basically showing that UV exposure during the first 18 years is is critical um, for skin damage and aging. So, yeah, you can see two things side by side. One thing that's, you know, it's the same message, but a much more interesting way to bring it, bring it across. Um, 
And then the next one for Just Cuts, obviously an ad that was just coming out of COVID, um, welcoming people back into Just Cuts. Um, so a lot going on there in that ad, a lot of type, you know, a lot of things to read. Not a real great message to take out, but basically what they're trying to say is come back. Um, much nicer, simpler way to do it. And it comes back to, you know, what some of us have been talking about, keeping things simple. Simply, you know, we've missed you too. And then a little bit of humor there with a, a family um, with long hair, but also the little girl has a beard or a little boy has a beard. Um, so that, you know, just sort of keeps it light and and memorable. You know, you'll, 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 you've got a better chance of, you know, in depending on where that is sitting and what, what sort of media it is, you've got a better chance of consuming that and reading it quickly um, than the one next to it. So question three will be the brief and drum roll, it will be announced later tonight. Uh, but an example, previous briefs. Um, so using a black pen and paper only, no computer layouts, create a print ad for the following brief. The product is post-it sticky notes. And with the goal to get people to pick up a pack of post-its uh, for their home or office. And the prop being, you never forget to do, do it when it's on a post-it. So yeah, you've obviously got a goal there of what you want people to do. And then a proposition of, yeah, the fact that you never forget to do it when, when it's on a post that says the product benefit of that. So you can see someone's response here. Um, famously, goldfish forget things. Um, and so a post-it note inside the goldfish bowl. And then they've added their own little line there, hack your memory, which is a, a kind of a nice thought for that. Um, and then I, I just thought we'd look, work you through this other little example as well. Because um, here's another example of a brief. Um, and there's a kind of, you know, there's, there's different ways, more, more and less interesting ways to bring this to life. So if we, for example, that the product was Nike Air Jordans, um, per, the preferred shoe of those who want to be the best athlete they can be, and the prop being shoes that help you jump higher, right? Um, and so one way to do it, um, and look, this sort of scamp is 100% fine, by the way, like a drawing this kind of sketchy and everything is completely fine as long as we get what the idea is. Um, and this was our shoes help Michael Jordan jump higher. Um, so that's a pretty plain way of say, saying it. Um, it exact, does exactly what it says on the wrapper, really. Um, but as they say, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So a more interesting way to say exactly the same thing um, Michael Jordan one, Isaac Newton zero. So same message, um, you know, same, same thought behind it. Um, but this is what we're looking for. We're looking for interesting and engaging ways to get a message across. Um, and you can see this reframes the idea of higher jumping higher, um, so that X happens. Yeah. So high that X happens. And yeah. So basically the guy who discovered gravity is the loser in this scenario. So, um, very simple, um, but obviously when you compare it to the one before it, way more engaging and all we've changed is the copy. Um, the, set, the drawing and, and the logo are exactly the same. So, um, and just remember it's about the idea, not about how it looks. So I, I can't employ enough, anyone out there who's worried about drawing and things like that. You know, and we can talk about this more, but you know, simple sketches tracing over things that's all perfectly fine um you, we, we will get the idea we're used to consuming things this way that people are judging this work consume it that way we can see an idea without it having to be too flash so yeah but you can see how this ended up you know this is this is the real ad uh but you're not expected to create an ad like this um it just needs to be a black and white sketch you don't get any extra points for photography or crazy fonts or macked up layouts. You might be a graphic designer or whatever, but don't don't put that into it. You don't have to um, you don't have to worry about that. I can see a question there. Can you use gray as a shader? Sure, <laughs> I think that that's probably acceptable. But um, yeah, I, I think the the simpler it can be, the better. Um, so question four um, is. Also, you know, a, a nice question where, you know, basically just tell us one way you express yourself creatively in a hundred words or less. So um, just note as well with all of this stuff, the applications of blind judge, please ensure you don't put no identifying information in any of this. Don't write your name on it. Um, 
we are judging you on your ideas, not who you are. And how you need to submit your ideas. So images must be black and white, uh, hand-drawn or trace. We won't accept computer-generated images, but type, obviously, you know, black and white type, laid over scan drawings is acceptable. Files must be saved as a JPEG. Um, save your files as question one, JPEG, question two, et cetera. And as I said, don't include your name. Um, and applications will only be accepted via the online portal. Um, yes, uh, just looking at that question there, yes, you can answer it in words. You don't have to include a visual like the first question. Words is fine. So for that question four, I think that must have been for Susie there. Um, so here's here's some examples. Um, very simple black and white sketches. You know, the Listerine bottle just quickly you know traced or sketched, and just words drawn in. So yeah. This is the level of detail we're looking for. Um, I think the question there can be a mixture of visuals and words like the first. Um, yeah, sure. I think, you know, I think that's acceptable. Um, but yeah, I think we're just looking for you to sort of explain a bit more about it. Um, and then what happens if you get in? Well, it's party time. Um, yeah, so I hope that was informative. Um, I'm going to pass it back over to Simone now, but um, and there will be time for questions. Um, so yeah, thanks uh, for listening to me. I feel like I've been talking for a long time, but um, yeah, hopefully that was informative and um, yeah, good luck. That's great. Thanks, Scotty. Um, I might leave you to run the deck if that's okay. Sure. So um, I'll just um, share a little bit further about um, sort of what's next with um so the application process obviously through the portal and we'll make sure that we notify everyone by the 5th of march um so don't worry we'll we'll be in touch for sure um with regards to the costs of award school so 2200 for new south wales vic and online and 1700 for wa queensland south australia um Award school is is a great investment, and the obviously I'm from award school, so I'm going to say that. But look, I can give you some some key points, and basically there there is a high probability of of getting a job in the industry. Um, often, whenever you speak to any sort of creative director, ECD, the the one of the questions they ask is, "Have you done award school?" So it definitely is is a is a help with a foot in the door. Um, it won't get you a job, but it will it will help you get there. Um, as in, you, you don't have a guaranteed job at the end, um, but it's definitely a helping a helping process. Um, it makes people better at their job. So um, it's a course about fine tuning ideas, and who doesn't need help with sort of fine tuning ideas, um, and the opportunity to network with the industry, um, and also make lifelong friends is totally next level with regards to award school. It really is. You're mixing with um, like-minded people, which is just um, such a fun experience. Um, so compared to university, award school has no prerequisites um, and it's obviously dramatically cheaper and only 12 weeks as well. Um, so that's just a, a few sort of highlights about award school. We do have Indigenous scholarship programs, so definitely reach out um, regarding that um, if you're interested. And um, with regards to award schools powered by the Advertising Council, which works to create inclusive training programs that provide equal opportunities for all persons, regardless of age, cultural background, sexual orientation, gender identity and expression, disability and social economic status. So if you've got any questions or any concerns, please reach out to me. And um, I'll just pop to the next slide. We've obviously got all our channels are there. Make sure you follow us because um, we're really pushing out a lot of great content. We had some amazing practice briefs we put on Instagram. So hopefully you received those too. Um, and then just on the next slide is um, all my contact information. So if you've got a question after tonight, we're, we're going to run through a pretty great um, Q&A shortly. So hopefully we get to answer most of your questions. But if you've got any other questions, um, please reach out to me. 
So I think now we're going to kick off the Q&A. So she's just going to turn it into a gallery view. And if all the school heads can jump on, um, we'll, we'll kick off. So with regards to your questions, can you drop them in the Q&A tab instead of the chat tab? And then we can try and manage all of those um, questions coming in. Um, we also had a whole ton of pre-submitted questions, which was really fun. And I was just going to kind of moderate them and, and um, see if each school head can jump in and answer some of the pre-submitted pre questions. So I might start with um, Scotty and just pull up the questions here. Um, so what is the consensus on people jumping into creative from different fields i.e media oh well look as i said it's um yeah it doesn't really matter where you've come from i think it's just more about how creatively inclined and the fact that you've got a passion for creative thinking um you know i started my career as a graphic designer which sort of led me to on a path to into advertising and then to where i am now um but you know my old boss the founder of the monkeys one of the founders of the monkeys scott noel I think before he started advertising, he was a French polisher. So <laughs> completely unrelated. And uh, some would say he's he's done pretty well. So, um, yeah, look, I think, you know, if it was something like media, um, which was, I think, the specific part of that question, um, yeah, I mean, that's only going to give you a better, maybe a bit more insight into the industry because um, you've been around a bit of advertising before, but I wouldn't say any of those things are a prerequisite, but yeah, it's amazing what skills people bring to advertising and creative thinking from anything from being musicians or actors or, you know, it, it can be anything really. Um, some of some of the best people um, I've worked with, you know, they were carpenters and things like that. <laughs> so I think creative thinking happens everywhere and in every job, right? Um, I think the best people at their jobs use creative thinking all the time. Yeah, awesome. Um, and now I've got one for Ryan, a generic AI question. What are your thoughts, Ryan? Yeah, I mean, Scotty kind of touched on this earlier. Um, it's it's really one of those things that I think it's just like a tool like any other. Um, but, you know, it's, it's all these AI sources are kind of feeding from existing things. And I think it takes a human connection to really, you know, join those two new things. That's where originality comes from. Because um, anyone who's kind of punched in, you know, a prompt into chat GTP to try and do their creative thinking will pretty quickly learn that it's, it's not great. So, um, yeah, I, th I think just treat it as a tool um, like any other, but if if it's, you know, to try and come up with your solutions for the award school application, I think it's that's probably a, a path you don't want to go down for sure. Great. Thank you. And I've got one here for Huey. Um, how has award school changed, impacted your career? Uh, yeah, I Award school is actually the very start of my advertising career after I kind of sidestepped from design. It also gave me um, my first real job. Uh, and I met one of my best friends and was super fortunate to get paid to hang out with your best friend, which is kind of like the dream. Um, I like to think of it, there's a saying about um, a student being like an airplane on the runway about to depart even the smallest turn at that very start of the journey can really impact where you end up um, as your final destination. So award school really is that turning point that will steer you at the start of your advertising career. Um, I was very lucky to actually get a call from the previous head of award school. It was kind of scary call, but um, <laughs> he called us up and was like, hey, you want a job? And we're like, yes, please. Uh, so award school really does connect you the, to the people that you need to know if you really want to be in advertising, like that plane at the airport. It's really uh, crucial at the start. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks, Wei. Um, so here's one, a big one for Richard. Um, I've heard people say that award school can be challenging for individuals without agency jobs as they lack the opportunity to discuss their work with colleagues. Is there a support system in place for non-agency students that provides a platform for idea exchange and feedback? It's uh, a good question. Um, so yes, there is. Essentially the tutor sessions, which is virtually the entire course, that is designed for you to get in front of the agency people 
And the more you put into that, the more you put yourself out there, ask more questions, show more ideas, the more feedback you're going to get. Um, so really the whole, you know, that is the best thing about award school. You're getting in front of agency people. That's how the whole thing has been constructed. So I'm talking a little bit around your question, but it is the heart of award school to get in front of agency people. There is also a folio review uh, towards the end of the course, which means you can go one-on-one -on -one with the tutor of your choice or the tutor that is offered you. Um, but um yeah, I don't know, always think that the person who's like, you know, jumping in in agency necessarily has an advantage. I think um I think you can um you can get a bit buried in opinion and I think you can also uh no, that's it from me. You can get buried in opinion and you can kind of it, it makes you all a bit samey if you're getting, you know, your your thoughts from the industry and all that. We want you, we want your personality. You're the only one who can offer that. Um, that is that is my answer. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, and Jezume, what's your creative process like and how do you come up with your ideas? Oh, my gosh, well, I'll just do the whole of award school in one in one go because that's, <laughs> that's, that's what award school is going to teach you is, um, is what your process is. So um, everybody has a different process and different approach Approach to creativity some people are really free form and just come up with stuff um, most of us have some sort of process that we use to help us sort of extract from the chaos within um, interesting things and start start connecting those to, to make something new I guess what you're doing when you're being creative is you're trying to make a lateral leap you're trying to make a connection that no one has ever made before once you see it it's so obvious right but but no one's made that like that michael jordan thing it's so obvious like oh, of course he's defying gravity but but you haven't seen it that way before and that's what makes our brains spark um and be interesting but to that's easy to make that to see it but to actually come up with that um is is a well that's award school so um i like to start by going wide um, and just writing down everything that I can think of about the brief, about things I know about whatever the product is, things I know about the audience, things I know about what certain words spark, and I write everything down as quickly as I can. I, I draw up boxes and I, I write as quickly as I can everything. Um, and if I go off on tangents, I follow the tangents in my thinking because that's where you can make those those leaps and connections back. So follow a tangent, go go to the weird and interesting places. Um, and then once you've dumped all that out of your brain, you go back and you look at what you've got on that paper and you, you look for interesting things and you ask, okay, what if? So, okay, gravity. Gravity is, is, is the opposite of jumping high. Gravity is going to pull you down. Okay, so what if it's it's about defying gravity what if what if we bring isaac newton into it what if i what who else is connected to this who else can i bring in um and that's sort of how you get to that to that place so um you flip relationships you reverse it see if the opposite was true like i don't know maybe he's being pulled down by the hand of gravity terrible idea right but you explore like alternatives and you see see find the one that is the most interesting and simple um and and sparkiest and something i've been doing lately as well which is a, a late tip um is lately i've been making when i get a new big brief at work i've been making a playlist so just going through spotify and just make a playlist sort of based on on the brief like look up songs that are about what the topic is and about this that and the other and as i'm ideating i'm listening to that music and sometimes it sparks really cool stuff as well. So, um, yeah, that that that's a crash course in 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 what to do. But um, I hope that I see you in award school and I can talk to you for hours about this. Yeah, until you're so bored. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, and I'll just I've got a question here for Corey. Are awards the best indicator of a creative's value or ability? I love that you guys haven't even done award school yet and you're thinking about awards. Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. Um, I think Scotty said earlier, you know, creatives are measured on the quality of their ideas and, you know, any creativity is, you know, it's really subjective creativity and hard to measure. But, 
you know, awards are a tangible way to do this. So, you know, they are an indicator. They are validation from your peers and the industry. And they can certainly help creatives build careers and reap financial rewards as well. Uh, there's other indicators of a creative's value, though, like hit rate on cracking briefs, you know, is, is really important internally. Um, pitch wins is an, another good one. And client satisfaction overall, you know, there, there's other ways to, to measure that uh, value. But everyone wants that description of being an award-winning creative, right? If they tell you that they don't, they're lying. And you should actually be going for it too. So, yeah. And awesome. I really like that Spotify tip, by the way. I'm going to use that. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> then handing over to Kaya, what is the hardest part of creative work in your opinion? Um, I'm going to answer this by saying uh, creative parts because I don't think there's uh, one hardest part. Uh, the first would be the blank page. Um, I don't think it's ever not been intimidating. It was intimidating uh, when I was a junior 10 years ago and it's intimidating um, two hours ago, you know? Um, yeah, and uh, it kind of feels like being asked to pull, I guess, a rabbit out of a hat sometimes. You're not really sure, like uh, <laughs> you, you don't have a rabbit and you're not sure where your hat went or even if you're like a hat person uh can send you into a bit of a spiral um the second thing would be overcoming your lizard brain uh when you're starting out especially your brain really wants to stop once you found the first right answer um you know an idea that appears to solve the problem and you have to work quite quite hard to convince your brain to keep going to keep pushing and being prolific i think uh learning to be prolific instead of um you know, having the best idea is um, the best way to get to good ideas, you know, yeah, being brilliant versus, um, sorry, being prolific versus brilliant, you'll just naturally get to a great idea uh, if you keep pushing. Um, the other thing would be brain pain, because when you keep pushing, you're, you think so hard, sometimes your, your brain hurts, your brain is a muscle in many respects, um, but the more you do this, the stronger that muscle gets, and the more it uh, begins to hurt less uh, and then getting over rejection as well when you're starting out I think is a big one for a lot of people um, we can be quite precious and you know uh, I guess we're still maybe identifying with our work or our ideas um, but the faster you can kind of de-identify from your work and see it as separate um, the better you'll be and the faster you'll improve um, yeah, that's, that's all I'm going to say for now. That's great. Well, I'll just um, jump in and just um, uh, answer a few too. So um, someone's asked what happens if I miss one of the sessions. Like obviously we know you guys have got plans beyond award school. The The best way to get the best um, out of award school is to be there for everything. But if you have to miss one, you have to miss one. But um, the lectures are obviously recorded, so you can always dial into the recording. Um, with regards to the tutors, look, the tutors are there for the session. If the tutor has time, fantastic, but they are volunteering to be there on a certain date and a certain time, so we can't have expectations that they're going to catch you up. It's up to you to kind of be there for the session. So they'll do their best to work with you guys, but um, it's not the end of the world if you miss one, but it's just ideally show up to all of them. Um, um, now, there was a question about um, uh, question four, and just to give a little bit of insight, maybe someone could give um, a, a little bit, maybe Reese or Way can, oh, sorry, Ryan or Way can give a little bit of insight into what question four might look like for someone answering it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, question four for us is to kind of get a sense of who you are as a whole person. Because um, I think like the the kind of icebreaker question that was asked before, uh, it sounds like a lot of you have creativity oozing out in all different aspects of your life, which is kind of what we're interested in. Because creativity is a way of being. It's not just 
you know, I love to make ads constantly. You find creativity in your gardening or, you know, in the way that you make scrapbooks or um, even accounting software. There's like an Excel world championship, which is actually amazing. Um, but that's my take on it. What do you think, Ryan? Yeah, I think um, when we're thinking about this question, it's it's kind of what puts you in that flow state. And I think um, anything where you do kind of feel that um, sense of creativity, it could be literally anything like what I mentioned, woodworking, uh, you know, Excel spreadsheet making, but something that kind of, you know, creates that that sense of creativity within you in that flow state, I think. Sounds sounds great. Um, there's a little few questions here. I'll try and skip down. As I'm as I'm in Brisbane, there are substantially less spots available than other locations. Is there are there any pros or cons to applying in in the smaller states? <laughs> yeah, go, Richard. Go. I'm really sorry. I was just taking a selfie. Oh, were you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back over to Jessamy. <laughs> ah, oh my gosh, coming into that for the for the small states. Um, so I mean, I did did a world school in Brisbane um ten years ago. Uh, I guess the beauty or like most of yeah smaller cohort, but also a smaller number of people apply from from Brisbane too. So yes, we take a very large cohort in Sydney compared to Brisbane, but a lot like there's a lot more people in Sydney who are who are applying. So um and what you get in when you do it in a in a small city is you get to meet the people that are going to be hiring you. Like there's there's not as many member agencies, there's 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 fewer people in, in this industry in this town. And by doing award school in in the town where you're like hoping to work, you meet the people that are going to hire you and, and give you that first job. Um, something that is a bit of a trend for, I've noticed, uh, Brizzy graduates, and maybe this isn't in the other, the other state, the other smaller states, but people will often um, do award school and then they'll sit on it for a while because they're going to move to Melbourne for a year and not do anything in that time. And like, oh, well, I want to move to Melbourne. So, no, get go out there use your skills meet those people use those connections and those people that have seen your work and maybe believe in you and maybe saw that spark in you um to get to get that first role even if your long-term plan is to to go somewhere else um plus brisbane is awesome so why would you go anywhere else fantastic that looks great someone was just saying with um how do you choose the absolute best idea to put in the application out of all the ideas you have brainstormed on? What is, what is the, uh, hang on, what if there are more than one ideas that move you? Move you? So maybe, Scotty, do you want to jump in and answer that one? Someone told me a long time ago, trust your gut. you just got to go with your gut feeling on it. Um, yeah, I, I think... Kaya said something really interesting before, you know, you do get to think you find something that's solved the problem and you want to stop there and you do push past that and then you'll get a bunch of good things. But don't be, they, as they say, don't be afraid to kill your babies, you know, just because it was the first good thing you came up with um, and you were really proud of yourself and you're like, yes, and your mum said it was good or whatever. <laughs> like, um, don't be afraid to push that to one side. And it's not easy. Like, it's something that's, you know, everyone on this screen still probably struggles with on a daily basis, like making that right decision. But all I can say is, you know, we've talked a little bit tonight about being yourself and um, getting in touch with your inner creativity or whatever. Trust your gut. That's that's my best advice for that. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, Scotty. And um, there's another one here that is... Um, uh, does copywriter art directors team up at any core stage um, or are they are all the tasks done individually? So maybe if um, Ryan, you want to jump in there. Yeah, so the course is pretty much an individual pursuit, but there'll be plenty of opportunities, you know, throughout the whole course to meet a potential partner um, to enter the uh, industry afterwards. Um, as Hui mentioned, like I, I've met a lot of my original copywriters from award school and a lot of um, people that I hold really close as friends now. Um, but during award school, it's very much, you know, a, a solo kind of pursuit, I think. But start making those connections in your shoots um, all the way through. Because that, to just to add to that, that question does come up, especially in those later stages of should I be teaming up with, you know, with someone else? And 
The answer to that question is yes, you can um, and take yourself, you know, once you've got your portfolio and you've gone through that to an agency as a, as a, as a couple, but um, you know, that's not to say that, you know, juniors don't get hired as art directors or copywriters. It's just in like all the different agencies uh, have individual needs, you know, they might just need to fill one position or they can pull a whole team in, you know, um, it's all, it all, it all depends. So um, but yeah, I mean, it's good to just to start making those connections, as Ryan said. Yeah. Um, and here's another one. Um, when I hear creative, what does that mean? I read that creatives are either art directors or copywriters. Is that is that correct? Is there are there any other areas? So maybe Corey, do you want to answer that one? Yeah, it's a great question. I feel like the advertising industry has hijacked the word creative. It's, uh, it exists in so many places. But, yeah, like within our agency, and I'm, I'm sure everyone else can attest to this, you've got creative teams. So there are copywriters and art director teams, but then there are other creative people in the building as well. You've got designers, finished artists, 3D animators, um, creative producers, photographers, videographers. So, yeah, there are that, that list of um, jobs, that Scotty pulled up before, um, that went off into all sorts of other fields. But in an ad agency, yeah, there are a whole bunch of different creative roles. Oh, that's great. That's really great. Um, uh, what was a pre-existing assumption you had about the industry before you started award school and did that change after completion and how? Who wants uh, Kaya? Would you like that one? <laughs> Sorry. Pre mm, existing. We were chatting about this a bit earlier. Um, how many people get into this industry thinking it's going to be like Mad Men um, mm -hmm. and it's a bit Mad Men versus reality? You know, uh, it's definitely not nearly as glamorous. We're not sitting around drinking all day at various pubs and then getting sudden Eurekas on napkins, although. I've written ideas on napkins before, um, but no, it's a lot of it's a lot of hard work and it's a it's a brilliant job. But I think you, when even just doing this course, you gain a much greater appreciation of how um, difficult it is um, and rewarding as well when you get those eureka feelings or when you feel like you've really solved the problem in a great way. Um, yeah, I guess it was. Award school kind of taught me that it was a lot harder than I thought, um, but also a lot better and more interesting in many respects. Yeah. Does that answer? Yeah, no, that's great. Um, so to any of the panellists, uh, your top book that you have read that you wish you had read at the beginning of your careers? I can I can take that one. Um, it would definitely be hey hey Whipple squeeze this if anyone hasn't read that before. It's mm -hmm. it's essentially a how to guide for creative thinking um, by a really great writer called Le uh, Luke Sullivan, um, and it's a really entertaining read as well as practical. So definitely give that a go if you haven't already. Yeah, but it's, just like no, the I, I it's probably. in the student kit. <laughs> So you'll you'll get it for free <laughs> if you end up in award school. So it's in the student kit. So just hold hold off until you um get accepted, maybe. So I was gonna say the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Um that <laughs> <laughs> that didn't exist when I started in advertising. So I wish I'd read that at the start. Oh. Oh, that's great. That's great. Um, and how many of you have been to calm? <laughs> it's like a great person um and here is it realistic to hope for a job in the industry that's part-time or freelance um who wants to jump in i, I can say that yeah um yeah I, I think in this day and age i think yeah there definitely there, there are sort of more and more part-time roles opening up um, freelance, um, to be freelancing as a junior might be a bit harder. Freelancing is usually for more established people that have, you know, a bit of a proven track record. So, you know what you're getting, you probably need to spend some time in an agency to, um, 
sort of uh, earn your spurs, so to speak, and like learn how, you know, to work within an agency, work with clients and, you know, all those sorts of things. So there's a lot of stuff you need to learn. So freelance might not be as easy first up, but um, yeah, I think definitely more and more, you know, I, I know in our agencies, there's people working, you know, four days a week and things like that. It seems like post COVID, everything's a little bit more flexible. So I would say anything's possible. Yeah. And actually, I've just had a look at the time. So we're actually really close to um, close to the time, but I'll, I'll read one more. If I win award school, can I ask for a raise in my agency? That was the, that's <laughs> the last one. <laughs> you should always ask for a Always. Always ask. <laughs> no, that's great. All right. Well, on that high, so everybody, hope you win award school. It's thank you to you guys. And of course, uh, uh, to Simone for um yeah helping put all of this together so thank you so much yeah thanks everyone and we'll export all your questions and we'll work through them and try and get back to every one of you with all your all the answers so um thanks for joining us can't wait to see your applications and um reach out if you've got any questions so yeah all the best